One of the first things I always add to a new game project is the player character. It's not only easier to create a new world if you can move around in it, it's also much more fun. I've already created this simple little 3D world, so let's see how we can add a character with some simple first-person shooter movement to it, so we can walk around and see what we're building. First, I create a new scene for the player. This is going to be a character body 3D node. The first thing we then need to add is a collision shape, and for this video I'm using a cylinder shape for the collision. You can also add a mesh instance to the player, but this is optional for this video. Since we're creating a first person view, the game's camera is going to follow the player's eyes. So we add a camera 3D and set this to be the current camera. And then I'm renaming this to eye camera. Finally, we can add a script to the player, and here I'm making sure that we have the basic movement template selected. This template already includes code for basic 3D movement. So let's add the player to our world and start our project so we can see how this default movement script works. Oh, yeah, also remember to have some sort of collision enabled in your world. If you're using some sort of CSG shape to prototype, then remember to enable Use Collision here. I'm also quickly adding a new CSG box to my world scene and expanding it so it functions as a simple ground for my world. Now let's test again and examine how the default movement script works. So what can we do here? Well, we can move back and forth, and also to the sides, and then we can jump. But we can also still see the mouse, and we can't use the mouse to turn the eye camera. So let's fix this first. Let's go back to the player script again. At the bottom of the script, we add an unhandled input method. We're looking for mouse movement, so we first check if the event is input event mouse motion. Now we can get the mouse position relative to the position at the last frame. And we can then use this to rotate the camera around the y axis and the x-axis. Note that we use the relative x-position to turn around the y-axis and the relative y-position to turn around the x-axis. This might seem weird, but it's just how we can translate 2D mouse movement into rotation around two axes in 3D. It's also a good idea to add a mouse sensitivity variable and multiply the relative mouse movement with this before rotating the camera. This sensitivity is kind of like the speed we add to the player movement. Now we can look up and down, left and right, but, oh, this looks really wobbly. Turning the camera directly around both axes here is actually a bad idea and will result in a rotational chaos. Instead, we can add a new node 3D to our player scene and call this head. And then add the camera as a child of the head. Back in our player script, we now need to update the path for the eye camera and also add a new reference to our head. Down in our unhandled input method, we then turn the head around the y-axis 
and the eye camera around the x-axis. And now we should be able to look around without everything spinning out of control. We can, however, spin around ourselves like this, which I don't really think fits this type of player controller. So we should also clamp the eye camera's X rotation. And here I'm giving my clamp input as radians, but you can also use degrees if you like, using the deck to rad method. Finally, to remove the mouse arrow from the screen, we can go to the script for our world. And in the ready method, we can set the input mouse mode to mouse mode captured. To make it easier to close the game window, I'm also adding an unhandled input method. And if a cancel button is pressed, I'm closing the game. You'll probably want to change this before releasing an actual game, but it's fine for now. All of this looks fine now. But we still don't move in the direction we're looking. And in our player script, we can find the reason for this. When we set the direction, we are currently using the transform of the player's root node. But we want to use the camera's global transform to move instead. So let's change this to the camera's global transform. And test again. Now we are finally moving in the direction we're looking. There are still several ways we can improve this movement to give it a bit more juice, to make it more fun. Like the head going a bit up and down when we move, sprinting, fine tuning, jumping and much more. But I think we'll have to save that for another video or maybe a few shorts. I do, however, have one last thing to show you before we end this video. When we are building large 3D worlds, it can be nice to be able to just fly around the world and make it easier to see all we are building and speed up development. To make it possible to toggle between flying and normal movement, I'm first adding a new input action for toggling the flying. Then I add a new variable to keep track of if we are currently in flying mode or not. And now let's go through the script and see where we need to add or change things. If we're not on the floor, then we just want to reset the velocity if we are in flying mode. So we don't get dragged down by gravity. When we check for input, we can also check if the flying action is pressed and then toggle the flying variable if this is the case. And finally, down where we multiply the x and c direction with the speed, we multiply all of the directions if we're currently flying. This will enable us to also move up and down. And there you have it. We can now move around in our world with a first person camera attached to the player. And when we press the flying key, we can shift between flying mode and regular platformer mode. The project files for this video is, as always, available for selected tiers on Patreon. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that if you want to see more like this in the future. Bye!